So we are going to get this uh, panel meeting rolling. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us, and I want to just say good afternoon, everyone, to those who are uh, who may be dialing in and listening. I'm Laura Scanlon, Director of State and Regional Partnerships at the NEA. And after yesterday, I can confidently proclaim that we have successfully entered the brave new world of video conferencing, thanks to all of our fabulous panelists and to our tech team here at the NEA. Um, and this is the first time this, uh, the state panel has also used our online grants management system um, for reviewing applications, comments, and scoring. So kudos to all of our panelists for their work in that area. You all have done a fabulous job in preparing for the panel. Um, and on top of that, you have mastered our technology. So congratulations, and thank you so much for bearing with us. Um, I also want to acknowledge my NEA colleagues who are here today and joining me. Uh, Andy Mathis, Partnership Specialist, who's also on the screen. Hi, everyone. Wave, Andy. There we go. <laughs> OK. And uh, I have also with me Jennifer Eskin, who is a division coordinator. She's not on the screen, but she's right here at the table, as is Vanessa Ockham, who also has been wonderful in uh, preparing all the materials that we needed to uh, have in place before uh, the panel meeting. So, and I also want to thank our tech team for getting everybody up and going. So um, just a little bit of orientation, again, because we may have new observers on the line today. Um, the State Arts Agency panel is an open meeting. And um, since we are likely to have new folks uh, observing, I'd like to go around and have each of our panelists introduce yourselves again, just as you did yesterday, um, just your name and your organizational affiliation. So let's start again with you, Michael. Hi, everyone. My name is Michael Bobbitt. I'm the Producing Artistic Director of Adventure Theater MTC in the DC region. Great. Thank you, Michael. And Stephanie, let's turn to you. Hello. I'm Stephanie Connor. I'm Vice Chair of the Tennessee Arts Commission. And I wore perfume for you all today. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. And Gail. I am Gail Kreider, uh, President and CEO of National Art Strategies. Yay. Wonderful. Thank you so much. <laughs> Lara? Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Lara Davis, and I'm the Arts Education <laughs> Manager for the Seattle Office of Arts and Culture. Thank you so much, Lara. Let's turn to you, Deborah. I'm Deborah Garcia Igrego. I'm the Executive Director of the City of Santa Fe Arts Commission. Wonderful. Thank you. And Sue? Hi, everybody. I'm Sue Jens. I'm the Executive Director of the Minnesota State Arts Board. <coughs> Wonderful. And next, Ernest, you're up. <coughs> Hello, everyone. Ernest House, Junior Executive Director for the Colorado Commission of Indian Affairs. Thank you, Ernest. Sandy? Hi, everyone. Sandy Shaughnessy, Executive Director of the Florida Division of Cultural Affairs. Thank you very much, Sandy. And Marty? Good afternoon. I'm Marty Skomal, Director of Programs at the Nebraska Arts Council. Thank you so much. And Ann Ming? Hi, everyone. Uh, Ann Ming Trucks. Uh, I'm the lead planning analyst with the Connecticut Department of Social Services. Wonderful. Thank you so much. That is a, we have a very esteemed panel. <laughs> We're lucky to have each of you. So since this is a new format, um, for those who may be listening in, I want to provide a little bit of context for, um, for the panel meeting. Um, in advance of today's panel meeting, each panelist has evaluated the 19 applications uh, up for review. Today, we're actually going to be discussing eight applications. They've entered their comments into our online system, and they've scored all of the applications as well, according to our three criteria, the quality of the state arts plan, the quality of the planning process, and the quality of the plan's implementation. Panelists have also scored 
each agency's work on the totality of their on the totality of their work as well as their work in arts education and serving underserved communities. And for the state arts agencies, competitive funding is available to those states receiving scores of seven and above in those areas. Panelists have also had the opportunity to review one another's scores and comments in advance of today's meeting. So a little bit about logistics for today. We're going to return to reviewing applications in alphabetical order. Andy and I will alternately provide introductory comments for each application, noting where there was co consensus or disparity in the comments submitted by panelists. And then I'll call on the two lead reviewers to summarize the strengths and weaknesses of each application in relation to the review criteria. Next, I'll invite comments from all the panelists to engage in a conversation highlighting the strengths and weaknesses of the application as you saw them in connection with the review criteria. I think it worked really well yesterday to have each panelist raise your hand when you're ready to, um, to speak, so let's continue in that vein today. We've allotted uh, approximately 15 minutes for ap each application, and today we're going to review eight states. Indiana, Kansas, Kentucky, Louisiana, Michigan, Mississippi, Nevada, and New York. We'll reconvene tomorrow from 3 to 5 uh, Eastern Time to complete the application review. We have four applications tomorrow, and we've also set aside some time for a policy discussion and to get your general observations of the field and how our process works. So one uh, final reminder, panelists, you have the opportunity to um, change your comments or scores based on uh, today's panel discussion. So the NEA GO system is open throughout the panel meeting as well as for an hour after we adjourn uh, if you are inspired or feel you need to adjust your comments or scores in any way. So with that, you ready to get started? Can I ask oh, a quick question, that's... Laura? Yes, absolutely. So um, for the conversation tomorrow in regards to policy and that larger discussion, are there any prep materials or information to review in advance of that conversation? No, we're just going to um, okay. no, have an open conversation based on what you've read, what we've discussed, uh, what you've seen in terms of our guidelines, the application questions, uh, just trends that you've seen uh, in the states that we've reviewed. So just purely based on what we've discussed during the panel meeting. Great, and we'll end you. the materials in advance, your preparation in advance. So since this is a new process, we would love to get your feedback to, uh, to make it better the next time. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Sure, Lara. All right, so let's get started, and let me get my notes here together. Yeah, we're going to start with Indiana, and I am going to kick it off. Okay, notes on the quality of the planning process. Panelists noted that the planning process was very thorough inclusive of all appropriate constituencies, and that there were three separate surveys tailored to different constituent groups. Panelists cited the outside-inside feedback loop as a good model for others to consider, and they liked the matrix created to guide the development of the plan. The matrix has helped the agency expand beyond grant-making activities to include capacity building, research, and advocacy. The narrative highlighted the ways that underserved communities were involved in planning. They commended the commission for partnerships with colleges and universities that helped facilitate planning meetings. Quality of the plan. Panelists saw clarity of vision and mission with goals and strategies appropriate to the agency. Panelists liked the built-in midway review of the plan, which ensures adaptability to change. Panelists thought it was appropriate that the plan refresher narrowed down the strategies. Prioritization is very important as the, trans as the agency transitions from being primarily a grantor 
to offering expanded services. Quality of implementation. Execution of the plan is strong. Panelists encourage the agency to continue the smart use of partnerships to help the agency achieve its goals and enable the agency to do more than its budget would allow. Performance measures are in place tied to the agency's budgetary process, and indicators refer to a three-year planning horizon with projections and visioning for 10 years outward. The Commission relies heavily on its 10 regional partners to provide not only grants but also technical assistance, which the panelists deem to be a solid delivery system. All right, and with that, I'd like to um, turn to Marty as our lead reviewer. Thank you. Great. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Laura. That was a good summary. Um, as you pointed out, Indiana is in the midst, uh, actually toward the end of its previous plan, which was taking them from 2010 through 2016. Um, the entire application, as well as the plan, is very dense and very rich. So there's a lot of detail. Um, and as you said, they did a great job of uh, doing a refresher to bring them up to date for what I believe will be the last two years of this plan. Um, they used a web cafe format, um, which allowed them in real time to connect with eight different sites around the state and do some prioritization, which I thought was a really unique, creative, and exciting way to involve people using technology. Um, it looks like the council has a has a 15-member planning committee that they call the Committee on the Future, which I think is a great creative title. Um, and they also have a Commissioner Emeritus Advisory Group, which I've not seen before in any other state agency. I think that's a great idea to stay in contact with those commissioners, obviously given so much in their tenure. Um, the, plan, the actual surveys were done back in 2009 and 2010. So I was just curious if other than the web cafe there had been any other attempt to update via surveys um, or, or any way to really tap into these regional organizations in the planning process. I noticed in their uh, update, which they submitted um, after the application, they included a biennial report, which gave me a lot of really good information and included lots of information on the regional partners themselves. Some of them, are, most of them are arts organizations. A couple of them are community foundations. And how have those organizations been brought into this planning process? Um, according to information in the chart, a good 73% of the budget of this organization is developed through these regional partners. So I would have liked a little more information there. Um, in terms of the plan itself, a very rich, detailed plan, a lot of great information on the methodology. They obviously this plan to give the, as a PR piece, to communicate with the plan. It has a lot of great information on the methodology, the process, which I thought was great. Um, I would have liked to have known what had been achieved in these previous years, and how did they build on previous years going into the last two years of the plan. I didn't see much about that. Um, a lot of emphasis is said, Laura, on partnerships, and the application list um, many partnerships. Um, I wasn't really sure what these partnerships entailed. Um, were they funding partnerships? Were they programmatic? Um, there was such a long list of them that, that came up. Um, in terms of implementation and accomplishments, um, most of the metrics that they cite are relating to grant making. Um, I think, the, again, the, this biennial final report that they supplied showed percentage of granting in the various categories per region, which I thought was great. And the matrix that you um, referenced, I think, is consistent with the plan. And they obviously, that's a living, breathing tool that they use. Um, they also did something I thought was really interesting, and I want to commend them for. Um, these regional organizations, um, they did a study to see um, if there were disparities among regions in terms of the amount of money given to similarly sized organizations. That's obviously a very analytical approach and really important, I think, for them to do in managing um, this, this regional approach. So I think that was, that was uh, really wise. They're doing a lot of great things in terms of capacity building, um, comparing the 
perspective that grantees have against the perspective that others have, including panelists and volunteers. I thought that was a great way um, to assist an organization. How do you perceive yourself versus how you're perceived by others? Um, and they're also doing some funding with um, community, um, with consultancy, help capacity building with this organization. Um, arts education. Um, it's embedded in all of the goals. Um, there's obviously some good advocacy going on. Um, they reference a Purdue University study um, uh, that actually came as a result of their participation in the Education Leadership Institute that was used for legislative advocacy, which I thought was a great way of, of taking their findings and putting them into action. Um, when I looked at the budget, though, I have to admit, um, the percent of funds given to arts education seems very low. The, uh, um, in the biennial report, it looked to be around 1%. Um, and in looking at the funds that were regranted by the other regions, there were very few arts education grants mentioned. Um, in terms of staffing, they have a half percent person for um, arts education. And I was just curious. Um, how, how that was being managed in the region. We're obviously doing some great things um, from the main office from the, you know, in terms of the plan, but, but with that being such a large percentage of the budget going to these regions, I'd like to see how they're engaged a little more in arts education. Uh, also, they did not break down um, the percentage on their budget chart, chart E. They didn't break down which percentage, which funds went to education versus underserved. Um, uh, under, or, yeah, and underserved. Um, in terms of underserved, they're doing some great things with their cultural districts program, but I didn't see that reflected in the budget. They're doing some great work with VSA for careers in the arts for persons with disabilities. Um, and they also had a two-day colloquium on community inclusion for culturally diverse and underserved populations. So I think I'll stop there. And Great, thank you very much, Marty. Uh, Lara, would you like to pick up from here? Sure, um, and with Marty's comprehensive <laughs> comments, there's a lot of things that overlap, so I'm, I'm gonna try not to um, reiterate anything that's already been uh, said. Um, I agree, you know, in terms of the quality of the planning process being strong, um, the, the tiered um, process with the strong feedback loop, um, I like that they published information on the process and the iterations at every step of the way, and really a great consideration for underserved communities and their access to provide input and partnering with different groups, arts groups, non-arts groups like Parks and Recreation to do so. Um, the Matrix, Matrix, a really strong resource, and then also I thought the partnership with the library through the Web Cafe was really interesting um, as well. In terms of the plan, I thought um, the major strength itself in terms of its format was really um, setting the tone with the public to understand sort of the construct and process and role of the plan itself. Really great starting questions like what is the nature of a strategic plan for a public agency? What is the environment? What is the scope? Um, all really great ways to draw people in and understand how this plan um, is laid out and how it's usable and really transparent about the methodology for creating the plan. Um, and providing an informa information on the ref refresher process for um, reassessment of the plan moving forward in outlying years. Um, there was a lot of information. It's a really dense plan, and I think that that detail is great, but with 25 pages or 23 pages of text, I think, is also um, something that might be challenging for people to really get into. Um, the plan in and of itself also was really heavy on process, and even though they had great um, metrics listed uh, in the application itself, I didn't feel like that was uh, given the depth that might have been needed in the plan itself. There were a lot of um, words like develop, engage, convene, embed, activities and objectives, the things that don't really um, speak to what you know has been achieved in years prior and what could be achieved. Uh, strengths of accomplishments. Um, I really liked, as Marty mentioned, the building more parity uh, or equity of granting between similar sized organizations. I'm wondering what has been the feedback from the community on that 
And has there also been a cap potentially on gaps between various sized organizations? What might that look like? Um, there was a focus on capacity building for education opportunities with organizations, which is great. And then um, they talked a lot about um, a newly developed survey process for grantees and, and panelists to really bring together that information, synthesize it, and share it out. Arts education, really strong. Um, I thought the PACE program for under school, underserved school communities was great, really ambitious, and something that they'd like to grow statewide. Um, and Specifically, their work with high school students to look at the correlations between arts access and uh, test scores pertaining to uh, higher learning, which is something I'd like to see them expand on, um, and if that's going to sort of connect at all to arts-based credit-bearing programs or something like that, that might be something that they would want to consider. Let's see, anything else? Um, in terms of uh, just what they wrote about uh, supporting underserved communities was really strong in regards to rural communities. Um, would have loved to hear more about the emphasis on um, you know, communities of color given their state demographics and how are those communities faring in access to the arts, specifically in the underserved reporting area. So that's all. Okay, thank you. Thank you, that's great, Laura. Thank you very much. Um, I'd like to open it up to other comments. Deborah. I just wanted to clarify, Marty said something that I may have misunderstood. He was referencing that um, the cultural corridors and the accessibility was not in the budget. And I do actually see it in the non-grant services and budget chart E. So again, I may have misunderstood, but I do see them listed at $74,000. Give or take. It's not broken down, but it's there. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Deborah. Sandy. Um, I think that the, bicent the bicentennial, the 2016, is a great opportunity, and I really look forward to the cultural heritage work as well as the work with state parks. So I have in my notes um, also congratulations on the 50th anniversary of the agency. Thank you, Sandy. Yes, Ann Ming. Sandy just sold my comment. I was going to say exactly the same thing, but I'd like to add the, I love the new logo. I love the fact <laughs> that they unveiled a new logo in January, and they shared it with us, which was great. I guess they haven't had a logo since, I mean, they haven't changed a logo since 1965, so I thought that was great. Great. Thank you. Do I see any other, anyone else? Yes, Sue. Hi, Sue. Uh, I think that all of the comments have, have done a really good job of summing up this proposal. I, a couple of smaller items. I was really impressed that nine of the 15 planning committee members represented underserved communities. I, I thought that that was really great to have that kind of leadership at that level. And uh, echoing things that we talked about a little bit yesterday, I didn't see a lot of lifelong learning in the arts education area, and I, I don't know if that they mean that to be a focus or not, uh, but that was a question that I had. And I was not familiar with this term access challenged, um, and, and I think I, I'm guessing what that means, but they're, they were using this phrase uh, in underserved as a, people who are aging and access challenged populations. Does anybody know specifically what that means? Marty. I can just take it. What I assumed it meant was that people who did not have um, easy access to arts resources by virtue of perhaps economy or geography. I didn't take it as a literal um, physical disability issue, but more access to arts resources. But that, again, it wasn't defined. That was kind of my the way I took it to as I read the application. And, and, and I, I guess. Mm -hmm. I guess just the opposite. I assumed that it meant physical access, but uh, but I think that raises the question about since it wasn't defined, we're all perhaps defining it in different ways. Thank you, Sue. Any other comments? Okay, great. Well, then we will move on. Thank you very much. 
And our next application is from Kansas, and I'm going to turn it to Andy to lead us off. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm going to open with a bit of clarification. Several panelists were confused by the total dollar amount shown for grant making, which was significantly higher than the state and federal funding awarded to the agency this past year. The agency was able to utilize unspent state funding from the previous year, and that accounts for the difference that you saw. Now we'll move on to the comment summaries. For planning process, Panelists thought that the agency undertook a thorough process. They commended the many opportunities for input and feedback as the agency sought to reestablish itself and made note of the focus group, online survey, and public meetings. Panelists didn't see evidence of underserved communities being involved in the initial planning, but did note their inclusion when the agency solicited feedback on the draft plan. Moving on to the plan itself. Panelists thought that the vision and mission statements were clear and that the goals and strategies were in alignment. The phased approach to implementation with year one and the future categories seemed fitting for a plan that both establishes and plans for an agency. Panelists appreciated the work the agency had undertaken to ensure an art-centric fo art focus for the plan in light of the agency's placement in an economic development cabinet. Moving on to implementation. The panel thought execution of the plan thus far is strong. They thought that the grant programs that have been developed align with the goals that emerge from the planning process. The panelists wanted to see performance measures that would be able to measure impact and success. The one-on-one -on -one phone surveys were mentioned as a strength in this area. And finally, panelists commended the agency and its director for their leadership in laying a strong foundation in cultivating partners and collaborations for future work. Great. Thank you, Andy. And Gail, may I turn to you to start the panel discussion? Yes. So building on um, the summary comment, this is an organization, this is a commission that's reorganized. So as uh, was briefly mentioned, they're now under commerce and encompassing film. So they've really changed. The director is supported by Commerce staff, and they have a modest uh, budget, you'll all recall seeing, um, and a state appropriation that's, that's fairly low. The um, process was classic, kind of iterative type of process that they uh, seem to manage well, looping back to organizations and providing access to those who were unable to attend in person. They had online surveys and all the variations of, of that. It was a two-year plan in the, in the look of it, and um, in, just in the context of it. And this is probably one of the most highly leveraged plans that, uh, that we've seen in terms of partnerships. And I, I can attribute that, I suppose, to where they are certainly housed and the fact that they want to try to do the most they can on a very limited or modest budget. So we saw a lot just throughout, both in underserved and in education, the idea of partnering with as many um, agencies, both from uh, from an arts discipline or a like sector to unlike. Um, one of the interesting places there of note was the innovation, innovative partnerships between arts organizations and other uh, types of organizations. That was in education. So I think that they were overall able to accomplish or to capitalize on their strength of planning and working with others and opening up possibilities for the future given the reorganization. Great, thank you very much, Gail. Um, may I turn to Ernest now? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Gail did a great job. Um, I think that what I and have in my notes is the the quality of the planning process. I thought that they did a great job given the the struggle and, and just within the new agency um, and and just within the short time frame of a year process uh, and, and two year of planning. Thought they had great outreach, uh, stakeholder involvement, especially. Uh, the input by the by the state representatives, the governor of legislation, um, and then all sectors of the community and the government. Um, I thought the quality of the plan, uh, it was a great strategic plan with clear, uh, achievable mission values and, and goals, outlined the uh, accomplishments and implementation process, even though still new uh, programs seemed strong and, and finished, uh, especially in the creative economy um, project, a strategic investment in the program arts uh, integration program. Um, I, I didn't know if it was 
still because uh, they were still working on some of those the arts education component um, that 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 they had additional information outside of what they provided. But I figured again uh, with with some of the challenges they were seeing, and then uh, the over underserved population, uh, I thought that there was still a little bit. Um, I was still looking for a little bit more in the area, but then also. Um, I thought overall it was a good application, and in just those arts and underserved areas, just probably we're looking for more information. But I didn't know it's because of the, a newer plan or, or newer agency with this challenge. I can respect that as well. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Ernest. Any other comments, Michael? Yeah, <clears throat> what I like about this organization, and maybe because they fall under commerce, is that. They have a really strong entrepreneurial approach to their work. And the other thing that I thought was very, very smart of them was that um, all the grantees projects have to link back to the agency strategic plan, which I thought was very, very good to get everything in alignment. And I would like, I mean, I'm hoping that their arts education programs and their underserved population programs grows, but it didn't seem like they were doing a lot in that area at the moment. But I really did appreciate how entrepreneurial they are. Thanks, Michael. Other comments? And Ming, and then Marty. This is more a question actually for Andy. Maybe we can talk about it tomorrow. I'm still confused about the budget because it's only showing their state dollars and not the NEA portion in the, in the budget that's in the application. But maybe we can talk about it tomorrow. Okay, yeah, we can, we can talk about that tomorrow in terms of the, the format of the form, sure. Uh, Marty. Uh, yeah, just a couple things, and, and I'd be anxious to hear if other people caught things that maybe I missed. But in terms of the planning process, I was kind of unclear as to how the public forums were held or what the focus of them were or what the questions were, how they were approached. Um, I think uh, as, this or as this agency really struggles to kind of reestablish itself, that it try and establish some sort of baseline of, of um, how much they're funding and where they want to go. I didn't see much mention of, um, of sort of baseline data or metrics or any kind of timeline in terms of their expansion. Um, in arts education, I didn't see any mention of partnerships with the Department of Education, um, although I do think their, their work within the Department of Labor and Commerce will be really important. I encourage them to uh, continue um, uh, find programs where they can um, collaborate more, more, more deeply. Um, I, in, a, in a state like Kansas, which is very rural, I didn't see mention of any real systemic effort to reach rural underserved areas. Um, but uh, I do think that, uh, that the fact that they include women and individuals with disabilities talked about some of those tactics with the strength in their underserved. Thank you, Marty. Yes, Sue. Um, I wanted to actually commend um, the, the new executive director. I, operating for six months without a board, uh, without any other staff, doing 90 plus one-on-one -on -one meetings uh, without any resources. I, my sense about this plan and about this proposal was almost like starting from the ground up. And so putting really basic fundamental things like grant programs in place and uh, hiring a staff and doing a, a planning process and all those. So I wasn't necessarily looking for a lot of extra programming or extra partnerships or those sorts of things. I think those will come. Uh, but like, um, uh, like someone said earlier, I, I really like some of the language in the plan and about um, especially in the arts education about linking to student success and, and those uh, real world outcomes. Uh, there's just a lot of really solid work here and it can't have been easy to do it all alone, but uh, I think they're off to a good start. Thank you very much, Sue. Any other thoughts? Okay, great. Thank you very much. And with that, we will next turn to Kentucky. 
and I will lead us off. First, on the planning process, panelists complimented the agency on their broad-based approach to planning with a wide variety of opportunities for input. Panelists acknowledge that due to budgetary constraints, statewide public meetings were impractical. Um, they applauded the agency for capitalizing on existing public, public events, such as the annual summit, for gathering input for the plan. Some panelists wanted to know whether participants at these meetings represented the full range of constituencies. With respect to the plan, panelists acknowledged the adaptability of this plan and applauded the board's decision to change the mission statement, reflecting a significant shift in the role the agency sees for itself. The move to becoming more of a convening agency responds to reduced funding levels and enables the agency to leverage small sums through partnerships. Panelists consider the goals and strategies to be plainly stated, appropriate, and achievable. Some commented the work plan would be stronger if objectives were prioritized and implementation timeframes were attached to each. Quality of implementation. The execution of the plan is considered to be solid, involving active collaborations and partnerships, resulting in tangible results for constituents. Some panelists seem conflicted regarding the presence of performance measures. Others commented favorably on the standards-based assessment of programs, the annual review, and an assessment at the three-year midpoint. The agency received praise for its support for individual artists, such as the Creative Industry Report, Artist Directories, Annual Exhibits, and the Kentucky Crafted Show, and for its emphasis on diversity. So let's see. I think, uh, Deborah, will you kick us off as the lead panelist? Sure, and I think you did a very good job of summarizing overall what I felt were the strengths and weaknesses. Um, in the planning process, I, I really liked that the agency carried forward several philosophies that they had gained from the last planning process to inform the current one. It's good to see learning across plans. Um, as you noted, um, due to budgetary constraints, the agency wasn't able to do uh, statewide public input meetings, so they, they utilized existing meetings. Um, I thought it was interesting to note that they felt that it resulted in a greater number of quality responses than ever before. Um, but I do agree with concerns that I didn't see evidence um, of them really targeting the full range of their constituencies. Um, the agency also used some standard methodologies, so I felt like there was a good variety and concurred that overall it was a good planning process. Um, I, I did. I was one of the reviewers who noted um, the shift in mission statement, and I really appreciate it when an agency is willing to respond to a changing environment and shift ever so slightly, and um, and really articulate that. Uh, the agency didn't have traditional vision statement, but it had mission-related end statements. Um, they're clearly stated, and I felt like they guided the work of the agency. Um, I also think that the goals and strategies were appropriate. Uh, to the mission and end statements, and they reflected the themes that emerged during the planning process fairly well. Um, beyond just uh, the adaptability shown in the planning process, as well as in the shift of um, the agency, as Laura noted, um, the role to shifting to be a convener, um, I thought was very strong. And I, I felt like, in some respects, that was a theme across all of these plans. Um, and again, I, I liked um, that work plans were developed on an annual basis. I think uh, it's always good to build that flexibility into your work plan. Um, I was one of the panelists who was okay with the standard-based performance, um, but specific information about the measures would have been helpful. Without them, I think it's going to be difficult for them to gauge their ability to provide evidence that they've met their own priorities along with the NEA outcomes in a quantifiable way. Um, the application expressed a lot of familiarity with the current state of um, arts and humanities education in the state. Um, I felt like they had accomplished programs that addressed a variety of areas, including helping school districts plan for arts and humanities integration, providing transportation, residency, a director of teaching artists. Um, the programs included partnerships with parents. This was one of the few applications that I saw parents uh, mentioned as part of the arts education 
uh, landscape, and I appreciated that. Um, but again, they were fairly standard um, methods of arts education. Uh, I also appreciated the attention paid to developing lifelong learning opportunities as well. Um, specific information regarding reaching underserved communities through their arts education efforts would have been helpful for me. And I didn't find detailed information regarding performance measures for the arts education program, um, assuming that they're included in the overall uh, measures defined by the agency. Um, diversity is stated as a value of the plan with accessibility for underserved communities as a thread throughout. Um, evidence of this is the commitment to a full-time arts access uh, director. Planned and current programs to reach underserved communities are informed by partnerships with arts organizations, libraries, social service providers, um, and other external partners, as well as through the agency's own folk art and traditional arts program. I was particularly impressed by the Stateway Forum on Careers in the Arts for People with Disabilities. Um, I felt that it brought the level of services provided for um, that particular underserved group up to the same level of service you would provide for any other artist constituency. So overall, I was um, impressed with this agency and with the application and plan. Great. Thank you so much, Deborah. Appreciate it. Um, next, I'll turn to you, Marty. Um, yeah, Deborah left stones unturned. Uh, but I will highlight some things that I think uh, support most everything she said. I think that uh, in terms of the planning process, they took a leadership role in this transition to being more service-oriented or to, em to emphasize their services in addition to their grant making. Um, they created a commonwealth um, network um, that is linking together the various towns that are funded through the NEA's Our Town Initiative, which I think shows a lot of, uh, a lot of leadership and state taking on a way to help those organizations within their state share their successes and work together. And I thought that the Kentucky Craft Market and in involving that organization in the planning was very wise. Their craft market is very well known, and I think that it's white making wise use of something that exists in the planning process. Um, uh, I thought that representation um, by rural groups was evident in the planning process, but a little more unclear as to how representation from other um, other groups that serve underserved groups is also included. Uh, that was not clear to me. Um, in their update that they submitted, they talked about a creative industry summit and an economic development analysis that will um, provide data to inform these efforts, which I think is, a, is exactly the direction they should be going on. Um, the plan itself, I thought the values section was very effective and communicated their priorities. But was very, um, I think that a section called ends, um, like ends to the means, or what they'd like to see at the end. And I thought that was very clear. Um, I also commend them on this new full-time arts access director that's been added. And they also have a creative industry staff position added, too, which is consistent with the plan. Um, in terms of arts education, apparently they had a mandate that, um, a legislative mandate that um, required assessment of arts in the schools, and that was rescinded. Um, so now they're placing their emphasis more on experiential learning, which I think very wide. Um, testing in the arts has had a, a, a difficult thing to sell, so I think going behind the in-person, the experiential learning is, is a great way to go. Um, and, and realizing that that's their role with their connection to arts organizations. They also say that arts education is required um, to be integrated into all general operating support grant recipients, resulting in the emergence of lifelong learning opportunities. Um, the budget chart shows that a large chunk of their regranting is for these um, basic support or general operating grants, so it makes sense to that education is a part of that. And they also have a program I thought was real inter interesting called the Kentucky Urban Rural Exchange, using an arts-based approach to involve young people in service projects that involve the poor rural areas of the state. That's a, a fantastic program. So. Um, they're also doing their cultural district program um, is also bringing, is making that connection between um, creative placemaking and awareness 
of the arts in underserved areas. I thought that was a good connection to Wonderful. Thank you very much. Um, any other comments from panelists? Yes, Stephanie. I just want to say I really appreciated the focus of this one. I thought they did an excellent job of carving out, and someone else said this too, carving out and identifying their part of the bigger economic development um, piece. It's very specific and it's, it's very focused. And I especially appreciated their objective um, in reference to the 21st century workforce and talking about creativity and workforce development. I thought that was a very um, timely and key uh, priority. I was happy to see that. Great. Thank you, Stephanie. Yes, Sandy. Um, I want to definitely commend them on, I, I love the diversity value as well as the compensation for artists. Hooray, compensation for artists. Um, also, I think that the new website that they're planning based around the theme, the themes of the plan, um, I haven't looked at it, at the website, you know, recently, but I'm looking forward to the new website, which um, I think the, it said it will be launched 2015, 2021. I don't know uh, for the plan. I mean, so looking forward to it. Thank you, Sandy. Other comments? Yes, Lara. Yeah, their arts education work really stood out to me. I mean, they're obviously engaged in a lot of comprehensive efforts, especially given um, the legislation to pull back on um, the assessment of arts and humanities. They mentioned something about um, challenges that schools are having with um, self-assessment, even though they see it as a promising practice within arts education. And I think they developed a SWAT team that that's the acronym SWOT, <laughs> that's um, supporting uh, schools in figuring out both their curriculum and how they assess. It would be great to not necessarily have traditional performance measures, but seeing how they've positioned themselves to really be a leader in this work, where are best practices around, I don't know, documentation and learner-centered assessment that they're supporting schools and developing, and how that might um, feed up into the priorities of you know, the state legislator when they go back to well, if they go back to a state-level type of assessment for arts education. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Other comments? Ann Ming and then Gail. I just want to mention that I really appreciate um, the makeup of their staff. Uh, you look, you know, they have like a creative industry director, they have an arts access, access director. Some of this has already been mentioned, but I just love the makeup of their staff. Thank you, Ann Ming. And Gail? I just wanted to say the, well, uh, two pieces that I thought were remarkable about this and also kind of against others is that um, even though the planning process, or a shout out, I guess, for SOAR, the fact that they actually took some of the planning process to meetings that were in existence that were beyond the arts, I thought was a very uh, good idea just to, to broaden the conversation. And I also thought that they were very good at expressing their values, such to be a guide for partners and grantees, so that, that, again, it goes back to that kind of unified effort of this is where we want to be, and let's be very explicit and clear about it so that we can be good partners and partner well. Wonderful. I think we'll let that be the last comment. And um, uh, thank you so much for that thorough review. Um, Next, we're going to move to Louisiana, and I'll turn to Andy to uh, provide an overview. Okay, um, planning process. Panelists liked that there were many avenues of input, including focus groups, an online survey, telephone interviews, and the posting of the draft plan. They appreciated that half of the focus group meetings took place in rural underserved communities and wanted to hear about efforts to engage other underserved groups in the planning process. They liked that the new director assembled a think tank of arts executives to acquaint herself with the field and revise the plan based on their feedback. Moving on to the strategic plan, the panel thought that the plan was clear and that the three strategic directions reflected the feedback from the planning process. 
They did not see a mission or vision statement. They noted that performance measures and indicators have been identified, but that the timeline for accomplishments is unclear. And moving on to plan implementation, they noted that the initiatives that have been created are all in line with the strategies and goals outlined. Panelists praised the Creative Communities Initiative and mentioned the decentralization program and the reinstatement of the artist touring roster. They commended the agency's work with partners to advance the plan, including the Arts Education Initiative, the agency's leadership in both the Louisiana and the Gulf Coast Presenters Network, and the work with the State Tourism Department. They liked that the staff reports regularly on plan progress and that the executive director and community development coordinator are making more site visits. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Andy. And Michael, I've got you up as our lead reviewer, please, if you'd kick us off. Great. Just a little bit more background information. Um, the funding for this agency comes from the Louisiana Department of Economic Development. Um, and they have seen a large increase in their workforce development for the creative industries, uh, a 16% growth reported, um, even considering Katrina and the 2011 Gulf disaster. Just so I would mention that because I think it's a huge accomplishment. Um, so many of their areas are, um, uh, I think 24 of their parishes are defined as poverty stricken. Again, some just background information. I thought the process was strong. They used an outside facilitator. I thought the new leadership did a great job of acquainting herself with the field and, and revising the plan based on the feedback. Um, skipping down to the plan itself. Um, I think it's clear and clean. Um, it's lofty, but it's digestible, and I think it will improve things for stakeholders all across the state and it addresses the concerns that they mentioned uh, in all of their meetings and such. Um, I think uh, because the plan is so clear and focused, the agency can streamline their efforts, uh, and some of the initiatives that they created are in line with the st strategies and the goals, uh, like the Presenters Network and reinstating the touring um, roster, the Creative Communities Initiatives. Um, I do admire their leadership and their focus. I think they also um, are practicing some really strong entrepreneurial skills, and I think them seeking partnerships and not trying to take on all the, the problems of their own is, is, is on trend. Uh, it shows adaptability. I am very impressed that their staff reports regularly on the strategic plan. Often these plans sit up on people's shelves. Um, Skipping down to arts education, um, I think the ICI program is a strong program. I do uh, appreciate that the organization is focused, they're focusing their LAA Plus initiative on just eight schools. Hopefully when, when they see that it works, they can scale it up and offer it to other schools. I think also the turnaround program is a bonus. And on underserved communities, so much of the state is considered underserved, and uh, it seems like most of their programs are, everything they do, serving the underserved is at the core of what they do. Um, I liked seeing that the folk program was reinstated and answered the call to some of the actions that came out of the surveying. Um, I think this organization has laser-like focus, and uh, I think some of their cultural district projects uh, have the kind of numbers that most agencies would, would dream of. That's it. Great. Thank you so much, Michael. And um, next I'll turn to Sue. Well, Michael did a great job of uh, covering many of the points that I had, so I'll just I'll be selective about some additional thoughts. Um, one of the things that jumped out at me at the beginning of the proposal was the idea that this is an organization whose staff and, and budget has been cut significantly, and so uh, working more at a partnership level in order to continue to do good work even though the resources uh, might be stretched. Um, in the um, I liked in the planning process uh, the, the involvement of people outside of the arts community. 
So uh, it, getting input from business leaders and from uh, regional development agencies and from others who are outside of the arts, I thought that that was a strength because obviously this is very much a, a, a state that is focusing on creative economy as one of its um, primary activities. Uh, Michael talked about the quality of the plan. I thought the plan was good. I thought that the um, it, it ties together well. Outcomes and objectives uh, tie together well. The for me, I, I'm I'm usually more interested in content than I am in packaging. But I did find some of the formatting and language kind of slowing me down as I was reading it. It was, it was a little dense. Um, uh, but that's that's semantics. Uh, as far as the accomplishments, I, I love the Gulf Coast Presenters Network. Uh, and what I liked about it is that it seemed to touch on all three of their goals. Several of the things that they talked about weren't isolated to just one of the goals. Uh, and, and I always think that's smart. You can do more things with, with an activity that's a good thing to do. Um, I, I didn't see as much in the accomplishments. They talked a lot about things that were um, what I would consider to be indirect services to artists and arts organizations, and I didn't see a lot specifically about strengthening artists or arts organizations in the accomplishments, but maybe I just missed that. Uh, like Michael, I love that there is a quarterly report to the board on, on activities and also a monthly check-in with the staff. Uh, I noted that, that there's significant turmoil in the arts education areas. There's significant turmoil in the state about Common Core and uh, what will happen with arts curriculum and curriculum overall. Um, and so they're choosing a, an area that they can really get focused on. Um, I, too, like the ICI initiative. I, I did wonder, though, about doing ICI for a period of years, and, and now that program is gone, and now they're moving to something else, and the uh, A-plus schools. I wondered why they sunset a program that seemed to be working, and maybe there was something in the proposal that I missed. Um, and I like the developing uniquely Louisiana, the cultural-based resources. I think that that was a strength. Um, and finally, um, the use of the regional development agencies to re-grant dollars so that they get all around the state. Uh, obviously, that's a strategy that I think is strong. Uh, it maximizes the impact of those dollars. So that's, those are the things that jumped out at me. Okay, thank you very much, Sue. Um, uh, now let's open it up to other comments. Yes, Ann Ming. Thank you. Right. Again, relating to the budget, um, I guess I was a little confused that that they only indicated thirty-five thousand dollars they're spending on arts and education. So that that seems like a very small amount to to me to to run the LA A plus program. But I, I don't know if anybody else has that question. But I, I noticed that too. Michael. Michael. It, it seemed like, again, because there's this litigation about the Common Core that hasn't been settled between the governor and the U.S. Department of Education, that um, they were just trying to focus that 75 on the eight schools as opposed to trying to disperse it amongst too many schools and give them less. At least that's how I read it. Sue, I don't know if you had that same feeling. Yeah. I, figured, I figured that when the litigation was over, they could allocate more resources to more to other arts education programs. I don't I don't have an answer. I'm I'm actually on that page in the proposal to see if I can find it. Here was my guess about it. Since the the uh, help me with the name, Rodriguez, is that how we pronounce it? Rodriguez. The Rod Rodriguez Foundation is uh, is a lead partner. I was assuming that perhaps there are resources there. And so maybe the $35,000 that we're seeing in the budget has to do with some staffing and maybe some uh, some things that the the um, arts agency is doing, but that the majority of the funding for that initiative is probably coming from that private foundation. Sandy, Purely a guess. Sandy, I saw you nodding your head. Did you want to weigh in on that? 
Yes, um, I was actually in Louisiana not too long ago, and I do know that uh, the partnership with the Rodrigue Foundation is excellent. So the way I read that in the proposal was that that's, that partnership is really the, the push behind monetarily the A-plus school initiative. Thanks, that makes sense. I also commend them on the Gulf Coast thing with the collaboration with the other states. I think we're going to see a lot of this uh, in the future, more states collaborating, so commendable. Deborah, I saw your hand. Thanks, Sandy. Yeah, I just wanted to address Sue's question about why they were sunsetting the ICI initiative. As I read it, that was always intended to be just a four-year pilot program, and out of that has come the A-plus school initiative. That, that's how I read it, is that it was always intended to be only a four-year program and that they have, in a way, taken those lessons and moved them forward into this other initiative. Okay. Thank you for clarifying you. that for the panel. Stephanie, did you have a comment? Did I read or hear somewhere that there was a, a different version, a more aesthetically um, laid out version of the plan, more readable? Did I see that somewhere? Or, or is it is the only one we have in that chart version? I'm just curious. Stephanie, this is Andy. Yes, uh, the link in the narrative now goes to the, as you call it, more aesthetically pleasingly laid out strategic plan, which also includes the chart version at the end. Okay, thank you. Yes, Marty. I was wondering, I was Going back through this, I made a note to myself, uh, the budget chart E, they have two line items or two lines labeled DAF and another one for stabilization, but I wasn't exactly sure what DAF referred to and I wasn't sure what how stabilization was actually implemented. Sue, so, do you want to comment? Um, uh, th those are the two. The two primary grant programs that the agency has, the DAF is it called the Decentralized Art Fund, and those are the dollars I think that go out through the regional development agencies. And then their second grant program is called Stabilization Art Grant Initiative. So um, they refer to them as their two primary grant programs. And I think then everything else is probably smaller uh, programs or programming or uh, professional services. Well, as a follow-up on that, I was also wondering the the narrative didn't say much about in terms of arts learning. If any of those um, regional initiatives had their own arts learning efforts, or if they're really, or if the A plus schools initiative was the sole activity of the agency, I just had that question. Uh, I feel like that was addressed somewhere. That some of those. Funds that are regranted at the regional level may be funding arts education, but they would be more local, smaller projects. That those are uh, pretty broadly, uh, those funds can be used for a pretty broad range of things. And Sue, did you read the stabilization grants as general operating for all, all arts organizations, and maybe some of them organizations have arts education programs? Am I reading into um, that? I, um, I'm trying to find it too. Uh, the Decentralized Arts Fund is discussed on page 9. And I'm looking for stabilization grants. If you think so, jump in because you're, you're closer to it than I am. Marty, I also want, this is Andy, I also wanted to point out on page 8, the Uniquely Louisiana website, which is for students and teachers. Yes, I did have a note of that. Thank you. There's a curriculum program. Right, the web-based resources. Okay. I, I don't think I can answer the question about whether stabilization grants are operating supports. It may be here, and I'm just not finding it. Yeah, I can't find it either. Um, any other comments? Are you still looking, Sue? I don't want to move on on this 
if well, I I could I could quickly go into the proposal and and try and do a search for it to find it. But uh, no, I was going to say there was one other thing I wanted to say and I forgot to say about um, underserved. I like the initiative that they're doing to to develop what they call non-traditional arts presenters around the state. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it harkens to something we, we read yesterday about in rural communities, there may not already be an arts infrastructure. So if you can develop other places for the arts to happen, at least it's an access or a gateway point. And I thought that that was a strong initiative. Great. Thank you. And any other comments? Okay, then we will close out this uh, conversation and move to the next application, which is the Michigan Council for Arts and Cultural Affairs. And I will start us off with a summary. Panelists acknowledge that with, uh, under the quality of the process, panelists acknowledge that with limited staff and no administrative budget, the agency did a great job of identifying needs and opportunities through a process that was inclusive of their primary stakeholders and constituencies. Some panelists remarked that they would have liked to have seen more outreach beyond those constituencies already known to the agency and saw limited discussion pertaining to outreach to underserved constituents. Others com complemented the one-on-one -on -one engagement with government officials, trade associations, heads of foundations, which seemed to be an appropriate strategy given the repositioning and relationship building the agency is doing. Quality of the plan. Panelists liked the narrative context for the plan and complemented the writing style. The plan was well organized, including an environmental analysis, clear mission, values, and beliefs. Goals and strategies were appropriate to the feedback received. Some panelists commented that the plan has an exceptional number of goals and suggested that in future planning processes, the agency might explore creating a handful of broader, more encompassing goals amplified with specific strategies and clearly defined action steps. Plan panelists believe the plan is appropriately focused on rebuilding and stabilizing the agency. Under implementation, panelists acknowledge great progress against the recently approved plan, especially for the for short time it's been in effect. The agency is strong in leveraging internal resources, particularly those of its parent agency and external partnerships. Panelists found the chart outlining their progress against goals to be useful and transparent. A couple of panelists were surprised that there were not more economic development initiatives given the agency's placement within the state's economic development agency. Panelists commended the agency for its public art mobile app, the New Leaders Arts Council, and for making the department's crowdfunding initiative available to arts organizations. Okay, and with that, I'll turn to Ann Ming to lead off the panel discussion. Okay, so building on uh, Laura's excellent summary, I just have a few uh, comments here to add. Um, so the planning only took four months from May to September from start to finish. Seemed speedy, but certainly efficient. I thought that was a real strength, given their limited uh, resources and staff. Again, very, very impressed by lots of one-on-one -on -one discussions, um, you know, with the legislative leadership, elected officials, and representatives from the governor's office. And the agency clearly has a very good relationship with the Michigan Economic Development Corporation, which they are housed um, since 2009, because the Economic Development Corporation assisted with the planning survey. They were the ones that administered the survey, collected, and analyzed the results. Um, again, I do want to say that I was disappointed that um, both artists and underserved communities were not in, um, involved they were really absent in the planning process. And the community engagement it did um, appear a bit insular and in that limited mainly to applicants. So the public reach wasn't as broad as I would have uh, expected to see. Um, in terms of the quality of the plan, um, strength is that it's an ambitious plan, but adaptability is the recurring theme um, and approach. 
And as Laura mentioned, I love the notes to the plan section where they talk about the need to be nimble and flexible about timing of the accomplishment goals, as well as the need to set aside uh, times at which to check in and make modifications as circumstances change. Um, they are clearly very focused about providing increased grant support based on gap management, and they cannot really do that. They cannot really invest in GOS because they, they have a significant jump in state appropriation this coming year. Um, this is an example of a plan with very good performance results or impact statements. I really appreciated seeing them in the plan. Although it isn't always clear whether or not um, whether or how they will actually track or measure measure them, uh, some of the statements have as evidence by at the end, but some of them do not. For example, how are they tracking that the work of their new leaders is recognized by Michigan policymakers? But it's still a strength. I just really appreciate that they have very achievable impact statements in their plan. As far as weaknesses um, in terms of the quality of their plan, so this is a five-year plan with very specific goals and strategies delineated for each of the five years. And it's, it's curious to me that the focus areas are not a bit more integrated. For example, convening the field happens in year three, engaging artists, immigrant populations, and individuals with disability are reserved for years four and five, and professional development for arts organizations occurs in year five. So one would expect that some of these strategies are bit, would be a bit more fluid and will overlap. Um, in terms of quality of accomplishment, I, again, I want to just, I know Laura already mentioned it, but I really love the fact that they have this color-coded progress to notes document where they basically walk you through what they did or did not do in relation to the previous plan. They're very upfront about it, so I really appreciate that. And certainly, they have a lot of impressive recent gains to work with. Huge increase in appropriation, increased staff from three to five, and the placement of the agency in the Economic Development Corporation, and then the Economic Development Corporation is, um, you know, they're, they're doing a lot of work with, with the council, such as uh, crowd uh, funding. And they're very strategic in their partnering with a variety of organizations, such as the RAO, the Advocacy Organization, and the Humanities Council to provide more services for the field. Um, in terms of weakness, many of the near-term goals in the last plan were not achieved, but again, they were totally upfront about it. Um, in arts education, they recently hired an art debt manager, and so they're clearly growing their arts education area with a variety of programs. I especially like the retention and engagement grant program created by the new leaders group. It focuses on creative mentorship of young people ages 15 to 35. And I know that they're really proud of their program for art supplies and equipment. Um, I didn't think that they addressed their arts education goal in the old plan. For example, there wasn't any uh, detail about developing a closer relationship with the Department of Education. And, and I was actually really surprised that they didn't mention that Michigan is one of 10 states selected by Americans for the Arts for the SP3 program to strengthen arts education among policymakers. Um, in terms of underserved, um, again, the underserved communities really have not been engaged in the planning process. Um, they indicated that 40 of the state's 83 counties are particularly underserved, but there was no mention in the application how they're reaching out to identify new applicants in those counties. So it doesn't seem to me that equitable geographic distribution of funds and allowing the underserved to participate um, in online grant review address, will, will address, will help them to, to broaden, deepen, and diversify their understanding of their underserved. So those are some of my comments. Thanks very much, Ann Ming. And um, Stephanie, I'll turn to you next. Sure. Um, again, very comprehensive um, review, and I'm 
going through trying not to overlap too much, I would just say um, about the process, um, I agreed about the insular um, nature of it. I think that when um, your outcome of your process mostly revolves around um, the need for increase in funds, um, that is an indicator to me that you didn't get beyond very far or far enough beyond your own folks sometimes. Um, I thought that that kind of message coming back would have would have opened up um, talks on opportunities to help train the field uh, in diversifying their funding base. I thought that was maybe a missed opportunity there since that was such a large percentage of what came back to them in their in their process. Um, I um, liked so much of what they're doing. I liked, as t in terms of the plan, I liked the way it was structured with, this, with the checkup in the third year, and it was adaptable. I did feel like it was um, very, very um, ambitious, uh, which is good and, and a little scary at the same time. Um, I felt like, um, in terms of the... Um, well, I was one of the ones that, that commented on the economic development focus. I felt like that even though they are inserting themselves in very um, effective ways with the groundbreaking crowdfunding initiative and um, the Art Tours app, and they, they are getting in there, um, I did um, feel like I was missing um, some more direct initiatives in terms of, of um, kind of how Kentucky uh, is approaching their economic development work. Um, I would have liked to have seen a little more in that area. Um, let's see. I, I did agree and about about the relationship with the Department of Education. Um, how the um, there were lots of good good programs taking place, but that is a key piece that seems to be missing. But they definitely recognize that that's a goal. Um, that I did not see um, a whole lot of evidence, evidence of lifelong learning opportunities. Um, it is mentioned in the plan that they will look for and support um, lifelong learning, but there, there weren't targeted efforts there. Um, underserved, they, are, they certainly support organizations that support underserved communities. They, um, their regional regranting increases their reach. Um, the panel meetings being open, via online participation I thought was good. Um, I did sense that some of the goals um, were um, a little overly ambitious in terms of the objectives um, specified to meet those goals. For example, goal number seven states more deeply engage young and diverse peoples, including diversity of gender, ethnicity, race, and sexual orientation in the process, but all the objectives um, revolved around the new leaders program. And the new leaders program is wonderful um, and, I, and I, I commend that highly. I just didn't know if that actually focused on all those constituencies, minority constituencies that they outlined in that goal. Um, uh, likewise, goals 12 and 13 address the growing immigrant population, which is a priority of the governors, it sounds like, and tribal entities. Um, it stated that the number of grant applications from tribal organizations has steadily decreased, but it was not going to be addressed until year four. So I was glad that they are honing in on that, but I, I would have liked to have seen that happen a little earlier. Um, let's see. Other than that, I, um, I enjoyed reading it. I liked it and think they have a lot of good, exciting things going on. Great. Thank you very much, Stephanie. Other panelists? Sandy. I had to unmute. Um, actually, on, on the application, I really like that right up front they put all the links, you know, right on page uh, 10. So you had all the links ready to go right there where you could go. And on the actual quality of the plan, I thought this was one of the easiest to read plans. It was really nicely laid out, clean, visual, visually stimulating without being overdone and over the top. So, and, and the colors match the logo. I mean, there was a lot to say, right, for just the visual of the plan, which as arts agencies, some of these other applicants, um, you know, were just text or a chart. 
So that's, that's just my own thing. And I liked that Michigan thanked the reader. I, di I didn't see that in any other application. And when you have to read a plan that's, you know, 25, 27 pages, um, they were very upfront and thanked the reader. So I think that'll get them some, some brownie points there. Um, and uh, I think that's it. Not from us, not brownie points from us, from the general public reading the plan. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Sandy. Uh, does, would anyone else like to comment? Any other thoughts? Yes, Sue. I'll, I'll add three, three things. Um, all of the summaries have been really very thorough. I like the proposal. I found it to be very honest and upbeat, despite all of the challenges this organization has faced in the last few years. Um, I didn't get a sense of... Um, gloom and doom and oh, woe is us. So uh, I like the, you know, here's who we are and here's what we can do and we'll do the best we can. I really like the program that was developed by their young leaders, the retention and engagement program, the idea of intentionally trying to keep young people in communities and, and I'm eager to find out what kind of results they achieve. I think that that's a really strong, uh, innovative idea and I hope it's successful. And then to on Ming's point, I was with you on the my concern about 40 of the 83 counties are underserved, and, and the underserved section really only had two paragraphs. I would have liked a little bit more text there, a little bit more background. And the one thing they did say is that 76 of the 83 counties are being served in some way through partnerships or programming or those sorts of things. I'm guessing that the regranting maybe helps with that. Um, so there is an acknowledgement that something is happening. I, like you, I would have liked to hear a little bit more about what that is. And those are my highlights. Great. Thank you, Sue. Other thoughts? Marty? Um, yeah, I just, in, in terms of their implementation, I think they have a very sensible approach to how they're working with their regional organizations. They um, they allow the, re or the, the regional organizations within the state. Um, they basically um, allow those organizations to regrant any grant and professional development funds. They're not large amounts of money, but I think those regional groups that are close to the ground are sometimes in a better decision um, and can save the state agency a lot of work by taking some of that workload off. So I thought that was that was really wise, um, and I think that. Um, They've, the proposal did a great job of going back and forth between very broad picture ideas, but also having some very specific tweaks that I think um, showed real attention to detail. For instance, they're able to, in their um, arts education residency program, allow funds to be used for art supplies, which is a unique but, but important detail that they obviously thought it was important enough to prioritize. Great, thank you, Marty. Yes, Sandy. Um, I think it was Ang Ming, and I agree with you, Ang Ming, about um, how some of the years need to be more cohesive in, you know, um, in the implementation of some of the goals. But I think that uh, Michigan did a really good job in on page 27, the notes to the plan, explaining why the years were broken up the way that they chose to break them up. So, though I agree with you, they did explain why. Thanks very much, Sandy, for clarifying that. Um, do I see any other hands or comments? Seeing, yes, Ann Ming. Yeah, I just want to add um, to, to what Sue mentioned. There's a warm tone to this application that we really appreciated. It was, it was really enjoyable to read. Just want to add that. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I know it's not part of the criteria, but. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good comment. No, thank you very much. Um, the readability of, of these plans is very important, so thank you for, for adding that. Um, so let's, with that, let's uh, move on to our next application. And uh, the next one up is Miss. Mississippi, Mississippi, and I'll turn to Andy to um, provide an overview. Thank you. 
Moving on to the planning process. Uh, panelists thought the process was comprehensive and inclusive and utilized a variety of methods to garner input. They appreciated the attention to the dissemination of the plan, including distribution to members of the legislature. The process ensured the participation of a variety of arts and non-arts stakeholders. And panelists appreciated that meetings were held in small rural communities and wanted to know about efforts to engage other underserved groups. Regarding the plan, the missions, values, and goals are clear, and panelists like that they evolved from the planning process. The vision statement seemed more like an extension of the mission statement, though. The plan was clear in its live, work, and learn themes and strategic directions, but was broad and high level. Panelists wanted to see more specifics. Regarding implementation of the plan, panelists commended the agency on its many partnerships and collaborations, but wanted more information on how the accomplishments connected back to the three strategic directions. References to strategies, timelines, indicators, monitoring, and evaluation were more implied than stated, and plan metrics seemed to be primarily quantitative. Programs of note included the Gulf Presenters Network, the Creative Mississippi Institute, and the Agency Radio Show, and the partnerships with Blue Cross, the Development Authority, and the Economic Council were praised. Panelists also had questions about the recent staff turnover. Back to you, Laura. Okay. Thanks very much, Andy. And Sue, you're up to lead us off. All right. Thank you. Um, a couple of, of background things that, that uh, one, I'll start off right away with a question that I had. If I read the, the budget correctly, there's been a significant increase in the appropriation. And I didn't find in the narrative a, a some description or some information about that. So, so if others saw that, maybe you can fill me in about that uh, later later on. I thought one of the strengths of this overall proposal and the plan and the approach is that this strikes me as an agency that understands the importance of evaluating everything, uh, not just their grant programs, but uh, how they're evaluating their services and professional development, how they're um, evaluating it, you know, basically everything that they're doing. And I, I think that that's, that's really an important thing that we all have to do as we are being scrutinized about the use of public funds. As far as the planning process, I think many of the strengths have been mentioned. I would add that I, I like the town hall meetings in underserved communities. I thought that, that was an important strategy. I, I was impressed by a 1,000 participants. I think that that's really um, a strong showing of interest and support. In the plan itself, uh, I too like the very clear three strategic directions, and, and I thought the cover of the plan was just just really catching, and um, it, it got my attention. I, I like that a lot. What I thought was especially strong about the plan, I agree that it was very high level, and um, maybe some additional detail would be helpful, but I, I thought it was really a strength that they included accomplishments from the previous four years. Uh, so often when you get a plan, you don't really know what's come before. And this was a way of saying these are things that we've already done. And um, gives you, as a reader, it gives you a chance to see the trajectory of where the organization is going. Um, I did find, in light of my earlier comment about the, the appropriation being increased, there's a line in the plan that says, we expect continuing austerity and level or reduced funding. And to me, that's a, a stark contradiction with the significant increase in the appropriation from 14 to 15. So I, that, that was a disconnect for me that I couldn't find in the materials. In the accomplishments section, I thought that there were some strong examples. And Andy mentioned a number of those. I like the Arts Ambassador Program. The idea of having folks go out on your behalf and, and help open doors and build relationships and the folk life program as well. I wanted a sense, though, of the impact of some of those examples, how many people are being served, uh, who are the folks who are being, uh, who are involved in those, just to kind of get a sense of are they big initiatives, are they small initiatives. Uh, I thought that would have made it a little stronger. 
in arts education. Uh, so, you know, it just breaks your heart to see that this is a state that ranks near the bottom in academic achievement. Um, I, I thought that there's an interesting mix of strategies being used. The, the whole schools initiative, really quite comprehensive, and the, the way that there could be graduated participation or involvement in that uh, seemed really strong. I, I couldn't help but wonder if this was a, uh, perhaps uh, an inspiration for the National Turnaround Arts Program. There's so many similarities there. Um, there's also professional development that's happening. There's grant making. There's curriculum. There's just I saw a variety of strategies being used in arts education that were strong and interesting work. And then finally, an underserved. Uh, the diversity toolkit I thought is uh, is a great tool that they've done. I I tried to get to the ten steps to career artists to occur in the arts, but I couldn't get to that link for some reason, and I couldn't find it on the website. I like the idea, um, and I thought that that was a, a, a great thing to offer. And uh, in this section, I especially liked that there was um, a conscious mention of how underserved groups are being involved in, edu in the evaluation, uh, not not just having them be participants, but actually engaged in, in how you evaluate and how you determine success of the initiative. Um, strong mini-grant program. It's just a, a lot of really impressive work going on in this state, I think. Great. Thank you very much, Sue. And uh, Michael, I'm going to turn to you next. Uh, only a few little things to add. Um, I was concerned about the staff turnover and if that meant something for the agency and how it's being run. Um, I truly appreciated how strong their evaluative processes are. I think those are exemplary. Um, and then I would also echo Sue's um, uh, celebration of their whole schools program and the diversity toolkit. They, they seem like, especially the diversity cool toolkit, it seems like a great macro way to deal with a, a small problem that everyone can sort of use. Um, I thought the plan was very beautiful to look at as well. Um, the only thing that I saw was a concern, uh, the only thing I had was a concern was I couldn't tell from the narrative which programs were new programs from, that came out of the, the planning process and which were just maintenance or growing the existing programs. So I actually thought the plan in many ways was based on what an agency like this should be doing, and it wasn't really being that innovative. While some of the programs are great, it didn't seem to showcase any new programs or new initiatives that address any new concerns. Thank you very much, Michael. Um, let me open up to it up to the rest of the panel for comments. Yes, Lara. Yeah, I just have a couple of really brief comments. I too was struck by the statistics around um, education in terms of achievement and opportunity gaps in that state um, with just, I think, around a 70% graduation rate. And then they also named that there's a uh, 60% of students, I think, in public education are on free and reduced lunch. It would have been interesting to get a little bit more from their arts learning priorities, all the great initiatives that they have, um, how they are specifically um, tied into or are addressing that particular, you know, poverty component. You know, which regions, which schools, that sort of thing, to see how those things intersect. And then also, I really dug the. Um, the uh, uh, you know diversity toolkit that's being supported for organizations, and I just wonder if that's a tool that comes from, or is it something that they're also um, applying to their own work as an agency internally? So is that something that's prioritized both within the agency and then something that's supported and disseminated for uh, other entities throughout the state? Well, great, thank you, Lara. Other comments? Marty, yes. Um, 
in terms of arts, arts education and arts learning, um, I think they're wise to make an investment in professional development um, that, uh, that is tied into the whole schools initiative. That's going to have a much uh, wider effect, I think. Um, and also, I want to commend them for their involvement in the Link Up program. Um, I've seen that program in action. It's been very effective um, and uh, a great way to work with regional orchestras to give kids firsthand not only an orchestra uh, experience as an observer, but as a participant as well. Great. Thank you very much, Marty. Uh, Sandy. Uh, this was another of those applications, easy to read, visually nice. On the whole schools initiative, I commend them on the 16 years. I just absolutely love it and all the many components um, of whole schools. Also, I love that the Blues Trail curriculum is free and online. Um, this application also had great links to support material, so made it easy to read and um, a pleasure. Thank you very much. Great. Did it, has Any anyone? Go ahead, Stephanie. Has anyone mentioned the um, Kennedy Center pilot program that they're involved with aimed at students with special needs? I thought that was that was noteworthy as well. Thank you. Any other thoughts? OK, thank you very much. We will next move on then to Nevada. And I'll start us off with uh, the, uh, an overview. The council received praise from panelists for the structure and the thoroughness of the process for the upcoming 2016-2019 plan noting a myriad of methods for capturing constituent input, including but not limited to town meetings hosted in 13 communities and 10 counties, surveys conducted in English and Spanish, and focus groups, workshops, and a statewide conference. Panelists appreciated the multiple and sometimes unexpected co-sponsors for public meetings as an excellent way to reach diverse groups of interest. They applauded the strong emphasis on their transparency in process revealing what worked and what didn't in previous years. Under quality of the plan, panelists' commented, comments included multiple references to the fact that the plan has guided the agency through challenging times. There are many goals, though they appear to be anchored in critical, critical issues for the arts in the state. And the plan articulates the rationale for the five critical, critical issues very clearly. In a couple of instances, panelists suggested details about time frame for implementation and performance measurement would strengthen the plan. Quality of implementation. The execution of the plan is strong. The agency has multiple programs, responses to the needs of its constituents, according to the panelists. The agency is valued among constituents for wearing multiple hats as coordinator, convener, curator, collaborator, coach, consultant, in addition to funder. The agency assumes a great deal of direct programming and wisely provides opportunities for underrepresented art forms such as dance. Panelists also offered kudos for brave new boards, streamlined grant programs, a strong focus on advocacy, and a retooled folk life program. And Sandy, I'll turn to you to start us off. Thank you, Laura, and um, you summarized everything really nicely. Some of the uh, strengths of this under the quality of the planning process was the the priorities were very clear and up to the and to the point. Um, the Spanish English thing came up several times, and also that the planning process, all the material was available online. Um, so we certainly appreciated that. As far as strength of the um, planning process still, I think the agency did a great job on knowing where they were and where they wanted to be and how would they get there. So that was another strength. I think that was really outlined well. Um, also, I liked um, the focus groups at the arts 
at the heart um, for 2009-2010. They were compri compri comprised of diverse multidisciplinary uh, community teams. So I, I appreciate it that um, several panelists actually, after reading some of the comments, commented on that the planning materials were on the website. So that was great. I think that the critical issues mirrored or were in line pretty much with uh, the goals of the agency. I liked how the goals aimed at addressing each critical issue were clearly positioned. Um, some of the strategies weren't there, so more detail and a time frame um, and measurements would have been good and would have strengthened the plan. Uh, so again, that that. Not a big deal, but because we could link it, but still, that was something that could be um, addressed. I love the arts learning and arts advocacy communication. I think that was excellent. Um, the agency does realize the critical issues. The only caution that I um, came across in reading the plan that sometimes without knowing who's going to be responsible for what, that kind of compromises if it gets done. So I didn't get a clear indication as to pinpointing who would be responsible for what. And another little minor tweak is um, to please proofread the plan or have somebody else proofread it, because sometimes I felt I had to reread the same sentence a few times in order to get the meaning, because there were some grammatical errors. Um, I think the plan has guided the agency through some really challenging times, so that was really, really good. Uh, let me move on to accomplishments. Um, I'm sorry for just trying to read my notes and looking at the screen, too. In spite of economic challenges, uh, the agency has had many accomplishments. Of particular note, for me at least, were the dance residencies. I really cherish the coupling of the lectures with the demonstrations and um, congratulations also on the Library of Congress being accepted in the, in the field for the oral history. Um, let's move on a little bit. Arts education. Uh, strengths uh, of arts education were, let me get to my notes, the office in Las Vegas, I think, is dedicated to the educational sector. So that's kind of interesting and, and, and a strength to have a, an office dedicated to uh, the educational sector. Uh, also, the huge task that they have taken on about, um, you know, updating the Nevada standards for fine arts. That's, that's a big, big deal, and uh, I commend them for taking that on, and they should have it ready for the 2016-2017 school year. I also appreciated um, the whole STEM to STEAM work. One day we'll all win that battle on STEM to STEAM. Um, impressive number of workshops, and also, um, well, that goes to underserved also with um, the VSA, half of the arts license plate money going to VSA. I love the arts learning rubric. I think that is just great um, to include that. And I'm really a fan of the add-on funding for the arts learning component for organizations supporting uh, that grant category. Mm, let's see, underserved. The Community Catalyst Network was formed, linking, uh, linking the Rural and the Urban Arts Council. I thought that was great. Uh, community Arts Development Program, the Touring, the Folk Fly. And that's really important in a state that has such a vast, you know, pockets of population. So I found that really interesting. Um, on the weakness, uh, sometimes it didn't really specifically outline activities that serve the immigrant population. Um, but overall, I enjoyed this um, application and the plan very much. Great. Thank you very much, Sandy. And now um, I'll turn to you, Lara, if you'd pick up from here. Yeah, uh, thanks, Laura and Sandy. And what's interesting is that you've literally covered everything I was going to say. So for the sake of brevity, I'm just going to scan through really quickly and see if there are other things I'd like to add to the discourse. 
Um, I, I thought that this was a really strong plan that reflected um, the rich diversity of this state and that they were very upfront with laying out that framework from jump, um, talking about issues of equity and access, specifically naming groups, rural residents, immigrants, communities of colors, primarily underserved populations, and really uh, situating that in an understanding of just the geographic, the techno technological, the economically isolated challenges um, that rural towns and uh, reservations face, uh, and understanding that even beyond the access to arts, but also sort of healthcare and other wraparound type services. I thought that was really strong. Um, within the plan itself, um, again, naming that the, the plan has been used as a critical tool for preserving the relevance and the work of the agency was something that um, I commend them on just being really transparent about utilizing the rich input from um, their community outreach and from surveys to populate quotes and other interesting things um, within the plan makes it, I think, something that is more connected directly to communities and more accessible in that way. And this is, um, Sandy, another plan that actually did a thank you to, there were just like a couple, I think, and this is one of the other ones that, that did a shout out um, to all those who engage and partner and support the work, so I thought that was really important. Um, I won't say much about this, just yes, uh, goals really clear and strategies maybe more on time frame um, within the plan so that we see clearly how these things will be um, implemented. I, uh, maybe one thing that wasn't talked about, they had a strong focus on just their ongoing communications via social media and the written word, just really wanting to make sure that they keep the public connected and informed of the work. I thought that was really strong as well. Um, I guess. This might be one weakness or opportunity for growth. They talked about the community arts development programs work, uh, highlighting that in rural communities. And I'm just wondering, you know, what about you know tribal communities? And Sandy, I think you mentioned this as well. Immigrant populations. What are some of those direct programs or key initiatives that are supporting those groups? Um, I think everything else, yeah, has been mentioned. So I'll leave it to the rest of the panel to chime in. Okay. Thank you very much, Lara. And mm -hmm. I'll turn to the rest of the panel. I see your hand in Ming. Yes. Um, so Sandy mentioned that it's a big deal that they're establishing, they're updating the fine arts standards for the Department of Education. Absolutely. To me, it really shows that they've had the respect of the Department of Education at least since 2000 because they were charged back 15 years ago to establish the fine arts standards. That's just, I don't think that's how it works in a lot of the states. So I was very impressed by that. So it is a very big deal, Sandy. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thanks, Ann Ming. Other comments? Deborah and then Sandy. I just wanted to know, back to the quality of the planning process, I really liked that at the end of each of the arts town meetings that they conducted in the, in the early spring of 2014, that at the meeting, each participant completed a personal advocacy card indicating the commitment to perpetuate the work achieved at the meeting. I thought that was a really nice way to incorporate action and planning together, to build partnership, um, to build some mutual responsibility of the plan from the very outset. So I just wanted to draw some attention to that. I didn't see anybody else doing that, and I thought it was a nice touch. Great. Thank you very much, Deborah. Sandy? Um, I just have two notes. I don't know where they're from, but um, the update had some really great links, and they, it, it was like a bulleted list. So I had that note. I can't put my hand on it right now, but I wanted to mention it. And also a very nice annual report draft for 2014. So I, I remember enjoying seeing that, and the support materials via the links was just easy to read and uh, very nice support materials. Great, thank you very much. Any other comments? Yes, Ann Ming. Yeah, I, I do want to add that I think the application itself was really well written. There's some paragraphs, it was very sophisticated writing, I thought. I just have to add that. <laughs> Great, thank you. Well, I think we'll end on that comment. <laughs> Good wrap-up comment. Thank you very much. and. Um, 
Now we're going to move to our last application of the day, which is um, from the state of New York. And I'll turn to Andy to start with the overview. Thank you. Uh, many panelists noted that the New York application stated that the agency hadn't undertaken strategic planning for a decade and questioned how it could have continued receiving NEA support. We would like to clarify. <laughs> NISTA was without an executive director between 2004 and 2007, and NEA worked closely with the staff leadership team in place during that time period to fulfill the requirements of the partnership agreement. A new executive director was appointed in 2007 and undertook a series of regional meetings to gather constituent input for a plan, but the process and the end product were considered weak by our 2009 panel, and they requested a new application for the following year. The 2010 application materials lacked, lacked sufficient constituent input. NEA withheld NISCA's fiscal year 2010 partnership grant pending the development of an expanded narrative and planning efforts. Following extensive work with our office and evaluation by our panel, the 2010 grant and all subsequent grants have been awarded. The current director of NISCA was appointed in late 2011 and initiated the planning process that is described in the application currently under review. The new four-year plan is called a work plan to reflect the rebuilding the agency is undertaking. And now we'll go on to the consensus comments. For process. Panelists agreed that the planning process was thorough and inclusive and that the survey was extremely comprehensive. They were impressed with the wide range of stakeholders that were involved and applauded the council's efforts to include individuals from non-art sectors and from other agencies in state government. Panelists wanted to see more information on the efforts to engage underserved communities in the planning process. Moving on to the plan itself, Panelists thought that the plan addresses the critical areas raised by constituents in the planning process. They agreed that the plan demonstrates a clear understanding of the agency's mission, articulates a vision, and that the goals are appropriate. They thought the focus on immediate midterm and long-term <coughs> actions was helpful in judging expectations and progression. They noted that the success markers are lacking in quantifiable metrics. And finally, regarding implementation. Panelists noted that while the agency's plan doesn't officially start until 2015, the narrative indicates work and accomplishments already undertaken in advance of the plan. They liked seeing the breakdown of accomplishments by the categories of strengthening and promoting, and the agency departments responsible for implementing the different aspects of the plan. They thought there was a good focus on utilizing strategic partnerships to engage wider audiences, expand participation, and accomplish agency goals. Panelists noted the huge operational change resulting from the state's new grant reform program and the agency's efforts to adopt the state's master grant contract for its grantees. And finally, panelists commended many of the agency's programs and initiatives, especially the economic development and workforce investment programs through the Regional Economic Development Council. Great, thank you. And Gail? Whoops, I'm sorry, I was I muted myself. Um, thank you very much, Andy. And Gail, I'll turn to you to start the discussion. So on the heels of Andy's very comprehensive um, summary, uh, let me add a few things. One is that I think it's interesting for, obviously, New York State is a very large uh, council in terms of the amount of money. They're, they are one of the more constrained and bureaucratic organizations, so they're less uh, oriented towards change and more focused on improvements, and I think that's inherent in the work plan and the whole way that it's been structured. Um, and their delivery really mechanism, so unlike more direct service organizations, organizations with much more limited uh, you know, availability of funding, is about making the right choices in terms of grants. And everything that they built up or are building or rebuilding seems to go towards that, to make sure that they make very solid um, choices in the granting, and that they keep a perspective on that in terms of being able to follow people's progress through doing what they say they would do as, as the grantee, um, and giving a perspective kind of back to the field about what's successful. I like that um, I, you talked about, they, they had, this is another instance of an organization that used an external uh, 
uh, expert in helping plan, and I think it was evident in what we saw in terms of the planning process. They used someone from NASA, and just the level of comprehensiveness that uh, occurred. Um, in terms of the plan itself, there was the specificity and just clarity of the grid that showed the intermediate and mid and long term uh, types of, of actions that they were taking, so helped us with judging expectations and progression. The only other thing I want to mention, again, you know, just the structure of their funding categories like the special arts services and the fact that they do give general and project support, which is so incredibly critical the, uh, to the field, and that they've tried to reduce the complexity, which is also incredibly important, especially for organizations that have a lower amount of um, the smaller organizations that just have less time and money to be able to spend on administrating, uh, administering grants. So I commend them for that as well. Great. Thank you, Gail. Thanks so much. And Sue, would you like to pick up from here? Uh, well, I will try, although Gail did a great job of hitting the highlights. Um, I, too, had a sense that this is a plan, uh, this proposal and this plan seemed very internal and very um, infrastructure-like, and, and I think that, uh, as Gail said, it has something to do with the nature of the way the organization does its work. But I also sense that there really is some some restructuring and some transformation, internal uh, transformation going on with a new executive director, which is, of course, uh, what one would expect. Uh, there have been uh, staffing reductions, budget reductions, and, and uh, that's always the time to go back through and, and to squeeze every possible uh, cent out of every dollar that you can in whatever way it's possible to do that. Um, I liked the planning process. I thought that it was it did a good job of engaging. And especially, uh, I liked the statistic that 30% of the respondents uh, were not affiliated with an arts organization. I, I, I like that we were getting to folks who perhaps are outside of the arts world who are also having some impact on the plan. Um, the plan itself, I, I like the way it was organized, three focus areas, objectives. I like the success markers. I think those were strong. Some of them seem to be outputs. Some seem to be outcomes, but they're there and there's a time frame. Uh, for all of those, uh, so I, I really like the, the, the accountability of the way the plan was structured. Um, Gail did a good job of talking about the accomplishments section. I had some trouble. For me, one of the weaknesses of the proposal is that I wasn't always sure about the role or the relevance in some of the accomplishments that were listed. Uh, for example, I wasn't sure about the relevance of the Erie Canal anniversary. I understand it's an important thing for the state, but is there an arts role in that? Uh, is it is that what it's about? Is it about involving arts uh, or artists in that? I, I wasn't sure about that. I also wasn't sure for a while as I was reading the accomplishments section whether those were descriptions of projects or programs of the council or whether they were activities of grantees. I, I finally picked up, I think, that they were activities of grantees because I recognize some names of organizations that I know aren't programs of the council. Um, but it might have been helpful to, to delineate this is a program that we're doing versus this is something that a grantee is doing. Both are valid. Obviously, those are uh, accomplishments that are both valid. Uh, I thought that the education section was strong. Uh, they gave some very strong examples of both school-based and community-based arts education programs, uh, some very direct engagement in professional development. So that was an important area. And then finally, uh, I, I thought in the underserved section, um, the partnership with the New York State Council on Nonprofits was interesting. That capacity building was, uh, it's an interesting approach that I hadn't seen taken before. Um, and then my last question, I, I think it's, it's kind of a structural one about the budget. When I added up the numbers in the budget to try to get a sense of priorities and proportion, this budget only comes out to be about $12 million. 
And I wondered where the other $27 million of the budget is. Unless my calculator was way off. So that, I guess that's just a piece of feedback to the, the applicant that the budget seems to be missing something. Anyone else want to jump in? Thank you very much, Sue. Yes, Sandy. Not about the budget, because I didn't add it up. Um, but just a couple of um, comments. I really like the, the co-branding with the I Love New York program and with the film office. And also, I read somewhere in the proposal about establishing an office in Albany or, or a presence in Albany, which is kind of funny because in Florida, we're in the capital and we want to establish an office in Miami. Uh, so that's kind of the New York City, Albany thing. I found that interesting. Um, impressive number of grants given out. Also, congratulations on the 50-year thing. And I found that two words mean so much. I mean, this agency nailed it in what they do. They are a funder and a leader. Those two words just nailed it for me in this proposal. I love the ticket sharing program, and I love the Proctor Theater's uh, Media Works project. So, um, and I also love the rehearsal space for, if I could read my writing, something with dance. So. <laughs> Thank you, Sandy. Um, other comments? Yes, Marty. I um, kind of want to amplify something that Sue said regarding the um, accomplishments and implementation. Um, I think the examples, I had that same quandary where these agency-led initiatives or grantee programs. And while I think it's, it's certainly viable to cite accomplishments that your grantees um, made, I'd like would like to have seen how those tie back to the plan, how those accomplishments in a way iterate what went on as a result of the plan, or how they are encouraging those types of projects. Are those types of projects indicative of the kind of work they want to foster, and how and in a way can they turn that these what appear to be kind of cherry picked <coughs> good projects into more of a trend? Um, I. I I did just a couple um, things. I think the, uh, in terms of the planning process, they sought input from peer funders. I think in a state like New York, where there obviously is a lot of um, other uh, grant making in the arts, um, philanthropy, et cetera, to, um, to kind of have a bead on what's happening in that sector was, was very wise. Great. Thank you very much, Marty. Other comments? Yes, Ann Ming. Yes, I, I want to ditto what Sue and Marty both brought up in terms of them showing activities of their grantees sort of as examples of their programming. Uh, because I think certainly that that's what they did in arts education, and I think there's a specific role that the council can play, like in advocacy, in leadership, development, policy development, so maybe it would be helpful if they talk about that. And I also have the exact same question that Sue has about the budget, so maybe tomorrow we can all be enlightened by Andy and Laura regarding that. So I always look well, at the budget first. You know, I always look at the budget and say, well, are they putting money where their mouth is? <laughs> I'm looking at it. Yeah, yeah so. I think um, uh, tomorrow we will definitely respond because since they're – uh, to the questions about the budget for New York as well as um, Louisiana. So I think we can be informative there. We'll follow up with you tomorrow. Thank you. Any other comments? If you look at Appendix M, as in Mary, of the plan, uh, the, the budget is accounted for. The full $39 million that you're seeing on the cover sheet in the application? Thanks, Andy. Any other comments?
I see people looking at papers, but I don't know if uh, that's in well, preparation for a comment or Sue. Yes. Well, thank thank you, Andy, for for pointing out um, Appendix M. Uh, I guess I don't understand the format well enough. Okay, I see. I see what they're doing. Uh, very broad categories, but they're not breaking out necessarily initiatives or how the money is going into these various projects or programs or grant making or those sorts of things. It's a very high level with just a few line items. But it is here. Okay, thank you. Any other any other comments? Sandy. Uh, can we clarify the number of counties in New York? I read 52, 62, and 63. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know how many counties there are in New York. I could Google it, of course. but um, And I think that with the new executive director and the new... Um, you know, the new staffing at the agency, we will see some nice next steps. I was looking on page 24 because of the comments about who's going to implement what. And they, they do attempt to address that on page 24. And that's why I was kind of going like this with the paper. <laughs> Thank you, Sandy. Any other comments? Okay, we have had a little bit of research here on our end and uh, determined there are 62 counties in New York State. <laughs> okay, well, it looks like our second day of panel deliberations is about to come to a close. Thank you again so much for the great work. Um, this is going... Um, I think very well, and I hope it is on your end as, uh, also. I wanted to respond to Lara's question at the outset regarding the policy discussion, and I just to give you some things to think about. Um, we'd like to focus tomorrow during the policy session on some of the themes that you're seeing emerging in the applications. You know, you're reviewing 19 of the applications, which is almost. Uh, well, which is, yeah, a third of the um, of the state arts agency field, the states and territories. So you've got a good, and it's a good geographic distribution. Um, so we'd like to see what what themes you're seeing in the applications, what recommendations you might have for the NEA and for the National Assembly of State Arts Agencies, um, ways in which that we might be helpful to the field, things that we should be focusing on. And then we also want to talk with you about just the NEA application process, whether you think that the materials uh, we are asking the states to respond to, um, you know, enable them to present themselves in the best possible way. Um, and we also want to get some feedback from you on this process since it's so new. Um, so those are just some thoughts uh, to, to be thinking about as we prepare for that conversation yesterday, uh, tomorrow, tomorrow, uh, yesterday, no, tomorrow, tomorrow. <laughs> so we'll have four applications to review tomorrow. Again, a reminder that the NEA Go system, the online system is open for you to uh, go back and, and adjust any comments or scores based on today's conversation. And thank you so so much for today's work, and we'll look forward to uh, seeing you tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern.